This is the Memory and Resistance Laboratory podcast. I am Latipa, Director of the Memory and Resistance Laboratory and Associate Professor of Media and Cultural Studies at the University of California, Riverside. The Memory and Resistance Laboratory is a hub for anti-racist, decolonial, and feminist of color artistic research. In this podcast series, Memory and Resistance in the Time of COVID, students from UCR interview people across the fields of education, art, medicine, and labor organizing to ask about the larger political, social, historical, and economic impacts of our current circumstances for vulnerable communities. In this episode, we are joined by Mario Vasquez, the communications coordinator for Teamsters Local 1932, and one of the lead organizers of San Bernardino Airport Communities, a local coalition of San Bernardino residents fighting for a community benefits agreement with Amazon. Mario is interviewed by Adrian Gonzalez, a fourth year sustainability studies student at the University of California, Riverside. Hello, and welcome to the Memory and Resistance podcast. My name is Adrian, and I'm a student in MCS 119B and fourth year sustainability studies student here at UC Riverside. A couple of weeks ago, I spoke with Mario, an organizer with the San Bernardino Airport Communities Campaign in our neighboring San Bernardino County. He gave me some valuable insight that I'm grateful to share today about what it took to build a strong, unified community base in response to silent knocks on their doors by Amazon the stakes behind this approved airport development, and the campaign's current demands and plan moving forward. Unfortunately, a recorded call starts a few minutes after since the recording software was initially being unresponsive. Nonetheless, I hope anyone listening enjoys, takes action to support the Inland Empire. My name is Mario. I am an organizer with the the, the, the campaign. I work at Teamsters Local 1932 mm-hmm. in San Bernardino, which is a union that uh, has about 14,000 members across the region. Oh, wow. And um, um, our campaign is built around the community at the heart of San Bernardino, Highland, Loma Linda, which is uh, pretty much the old Northern Air Force Base. Uh-huh. Um, and it's now San Bernardino International Airport. So um, a few dozen or a few, yeah, like a, a few dozen organizations here in the region. And then you can check this out if you go to sbairportcommunities.com mm-hmm. or sorry, sbairportcommunities.org. Uh, you'll see a full list of the organizations that have sort of partnered up together and essentially said enough is enough when it comes to economic development that only prioritizes the needs of, of corporations. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so um, at, at San Bernardino Airport, we had news of a, a huge air cargo terminal being built called Eastgate, being developed by um, a, a, um, a world a developer prominent uh, around the world called Hillwood, um, has roots in Ross Perot Jr. Uh, you might remember Ross Perot was the 1992 presidential candidate, sort of a if Trump before he was before Trump, you know, mm, um, wow. and um, this coalition, you know, looked at the situation and all of us, uh, we have got uh, some great organizations, the Warehouse Worker Resource Center, the coalition for uh, the Inland Coalition for Immigrant Justice, um, the Center for Community Action and Environmental Justice. Uh, the Inland Congregations United for Change. These organizations have, we've all been working together for, or we've all been working for justice uh, in a variety of different ways, right, uh, for Mm -hmm. for quite some time. And essentially we realized, like, how can we change things if we don't band up together, right? Mm -hmm. So this coalition has ultimately taken on to this San Bernardino Airport Communities campaign to ensure that the development at San Bernardino International Airport, which for the longest time was rumored to be an Amazon facility, and now, as of Friday, was officially confirmed to be an Amazon facility. Oh wow! We want to make sure, yeah, we want to make sure that this facility can guarantee good jobs 
for local residents uh-huh. will be most affected by this development, as well as clean air measures. Um, so that we, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot more trucks, a lot more planes um, mm-hmm. in in the neighborhoods around the airport. So we need to make sure we can do the the absolute most we can to to um, you know reduce the impact of air quality. So, yeah, so that's that. that's pretty much the start of it, and that's the, sort of the basics. Um, and I can you know I can totally explain anything else. Okay. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I was um just doing a little research, yeah, and I read that um with this new facility that it was because there's already like well there already like fifty something trucks that go through per week, but now there's going to be something like that amount of trucks. I mean that amount of flights flying into the area like per day or something like that. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. It, it is going to be a huge increase of of air traffic in the area in the area, and um. You know, uh, the trucks already are a major problem all, all along that area. Um, mm-hmm. The logistics industry has really taken root of the heart of San Bernardino. And ultimately, you know, when you take a look at the impacts, it hasn't really helped in families at any yeah. time. I mean, you know, there are some good actors who do try their best. And a lot of them are, you know, union employers who, who have at least some obligation uh some corporate obligation to try and you know make sure they are really doing their best uh, as far as um the environmental impact goes but you know amazon so far its track record is really spotty and, and obviously mm-hmm. um you know with amazon being the largest private employer in the region um it's very evident to so many people here in the region that you know we made the company rich Mm-hmm. The working people of this region made the company rich, and so far, you know, all you've got in return is, uh, you know, um, families not being able to make ends meet, really, mm-hmm. uh, and and uh, a, a ton of asthma, right? A ton of asthma. Yeah. So the community benefits agreement that we're all rallying around is really a, is really the best way to guarantee that we can get something better. So we can we can get guarantees. A community benefits agreement would be a legally enforceable contract. Um, there's plenty of examples of, of, of you know, corporations and, and other businesses, business entities agreeing to community benefits agreements when they do propose development in, in communities. Uh, one example is uh, the Staples Center. When they built the Staples Center, there was, there was a community benefits agreement attached to that where various uh, community organizations banded together and, and ensured that the economic development wouldn't just be for uh, some of the more influential stakeholders, right? Mm-hmm. And would actually filter out to make sure community members could benefit. So uh, that's really what we're, we're rallying around is guarantees. We want guaranteed good jobs and clean air. Uh, okay, okay, cool. Definitely. So um, the um, community benefits agreement, is that, like you said, like there's some other examples of the, of the Sable Center. Is that just like, how to explain it? Like, Mm, there's so there's like a like there's like a format to it kind of like forming the agreements or well um you know there's so many different ways uh-huh. that these community benefits can be implemented but the, the best way to do them is when it's a, it is a grassroots effort where the needs of community members are reflected in, in what the development will bring so you know there's so many different examples of community benefits agreements and the ones that do work the best are when there is transparency there's accountability and and ultimately it's rooted it's grounded in in um in what the community needs right mm-hmm. so so those are you know um basic values that we've taken to this and we've had plenty of experiences um where we've actually gathered input from the community uh primarily you know like when there really was a lot of noise that this thing was going to be built, too many people did not know about this thing. Too many people did not know about this facility. So what we started to do was we started we started actually knocking on doors. We knocked on thousands of doors mm-hmm. um, is to make sure that people knew that this development was coming to the neighborhood and we wanted to know how they felt about it. And, you know, overwhelmingly, we discovered that it really was a case of people, people, being feeling like 
no, we do deserve better. Like, oh, it's going to be another warehouse. Oh, this time at the at the, at the airport, you know, like mm-hmm. um, everybody knows somebody here who who works in the logistics industry, mm-hmm. and and Amazon is always known as you know a place that yeah does really grind you down. There's plenty of, plenty of literature that people can read about how working at an Amazon is one of the most dangerous jobs out there. Mm-hmm. You know. Working at Amazon is, is one of the places where you could actually, uh, you are not going to be, you're not going to be around there for very long. You know, the turnover rate is extremely high mm-hmm. and, um, and ultimately, you know, we, we, there's ways to guarantee from the start contractually that, that this isn't the way it should be. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, at town hall forums, we we organized a town hall forum in April of 2019 um, that was uh, attended by uh, uh, about 300 people, and you know we garnered we got input from folks there. We we made sure surveys were were filled out, and ultimately it was very clear that people wanted good career sustaining, family sustaining jobs, and also. Um, the best possible effort to make sure air quality isn't, isn't impacted. So it really, yeah, it's like a template, you know, like there mm-hmm. is a template because you most, most people, most working people want the same things. Right. Uh-huh. But ultimately, you know, these are local community organizations and local residents who are like together, uh, coming up with solutions and trying to fight for them, you know? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I remember, um, hearing and seeing about like the initial protests maybe like around i think last winter like in december january mm-hmm. i remember hearing seeing the protests and um yeah that's just great it's it's you guys are definitely like really well organized and have a really clear message and obviously like there's a really clear cut really a seemingly easy solution that is like i guess you know obviously receiving pushback um how do you think that the pandemic and like everybody having to suddenly social distance has impacted the campaign or impacted like how things are moving along. Cause uh, one thing I definitely noticed and one thing that one reason I was like interested mm-hmm. in um, reaching out to you guys for this project was because like, I, I, I know somebody um, who works in the logistics industry and um, yeah, I, during the pandemic, like, I was giving, they got, like, a temporary gig making masks, actually, like, at a warehouse, like, for a, for a contractor, so I was, they didn't have a car, so I was giving them rides, like, most every day to the job, really early in the morning, like, at seven in the morning, and, um, you know, on, on social media and stuff, everybody, like, it was a really, like, popular topic, like, oh, like, now that everybody's social distancing, like, the skies in LA are so clear, like, there's so much less traffic, like, you can finally, like, see smog free skies, but, like, I was, when I was giving my friend rides in the morning, I noticed, like, wow, like, it's true. Like, you know, like, traffic obviously is moving now. Like, it's not, like, a parking lot. But, like, there's still tons of cars in the freeway uh, on the 60 at, like, 6.30 in the morning. Like, it's there's still a layer of smog. Like, the you pass all the warehouses are st- still, go, you know, still business as usual, still pumping all uh-huh. these um, acids and chemicals into the air. And, and, yeah, so I was just, like, you know. And also... When I was doing research, I had come across this article by the New York Times about, um, it was about, um, like, specifically in the pandemic, like, oh, we're all social distancing, but a lot of air cargo is still going. There's increased air cargo because people are doing even more online right. shopping. There people are doing even more online shopping. And, um, yeah, I think another reason it's really important that your campaign specifically deserves a lot of attention in the media is because, like, in that article, this is a New York Times article, it talked about... They profiled this man who lives... I'm not going to, like, blast him or nothing, but, like, he lives in... I read the same article you're talking about. I know know what article you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, so they talked to this guy from Idlewild who lives, like, in this remote mountain town, hella far away, and he was like, yeah, Mm -hmm. like... And, you know, it was he got to have a platform, basically, to talk about, you know, the noise and, like, the, you know, do a little socially distant thing he did for it. But, you know, for for you guys, like, you guys live right next to the airports. Like, you guys work in the yeah. actual warehouses. It's not just about noise. It's about traffic. It's about pollution. It's about, like, your livelihoods. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're very, you're, that's a very a spot on observation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as far as, like, COVID goes, um, it obviously is a lot harder because, um, you know, people are very hesitant 
to um, knock on someone's door nowadays mm -hmm. or, or maybe even open the door, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, there has had to be a lot more engagement of folks uh, through virtual means, mm -hmm. right? So just like the rest of the world, there is a lot more um, sort of a virtual meetings and a lot, just in general, just a lot more trying to keep people, keep in contact with people um, through not non physical means. Mm -hmm. So you know it's tough, but um, you know the folks who are working and like dedicated to to making sure that um, that community can be can can organize mm -hmm. um, is is you know regardless like we're still steadfastly um you know committed to making sure community members can have an input in all of this so so you know regardless of whether or not we can knock on doors or not uh we've already built up a network of folks you know uh -huh. we've already built up a network of folks and uh while visits are a lot harder you know or bringing more people into the fold is a lot harder um Certainly, uh, we still are in contact with folks, right? Uh -huh. And moving forward, especially now that Amazon is officially the tenant of this of this facility, uh -huh. um, you know, we will obviously have to think of more creative ways to, to bring more folks into the fold. So that's a very much that's something that's kind of very much in flux because it is such new, recent news. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I mean, enthusiasm is still there. And, and, you know, the fact that uh, Amazon did just announce it is, is reason to really galvanize forces. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully we can we can do that in the next next few months. Definitely. So, um, like, I guess I would ask next, like, what has has anything does the fact that Amazon is like now confirmed, even though it was like kind of like what's changed now that it's like confirmed? that amazon is nothing to be honest oh, okay nothing really Nobody already kind of knew yeah that. like yeah i mean you know we've been talking about it like this for a long time because we we i mean it's just very um it's if you know what to look for i mean it was fairly obvious that it was going to be amazon mm -hmm. so um so you know i mean we've always talked about this in a way that um you know, listen, regardless of who it is, like, we want good neighbors. We want neighbors yeah. who who don't, um, you know, overly and detrimentally impact the the community at large, mm -hmm. right? And, and um, so, you know, regardless if it was Amazon or not, um, that's something that, that community members wouldn't abide by. So mm -hmm. the fact that it is Amazon obviously just puts more urgency into it, Um same urgency as we ever had really but still i mean like it's it's just more evident than ever like listen folks like amazon obviously is you know the most arguably the most powerful company in the world so uh owned by the richest man in the world so i mean it, you know they certainly can't afford to, to implement the community benefits agreement they certainly can yeah. afford to treat the workers better they certainly can't afford to, to make sure we have clean clean air um sort of operations at their facilities, it's just a matter of willpower, right? And yeah. and that's why you know community members are organizing. So just same as always, we're 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 going to organize and we're going to make sure that you know this multinational corporation actually um, becomes a good neighbor. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, what I would what 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 are what are like the next steps or like what kind of is the timeline now? Cause it's been approved technically, right? It's just about like, like laying it or mm -hmm. trying to get this community benefits agreement implemented. So like, what are, obviously we don't really know when, um, the pen, like shelter in place is going to be lifted. Well, I, I think Riverside County sure. kind of did, but it's still kind of, I think everyone's still kind of, kind of stay inside or like, like, I guess. Yeah. 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 Whether, you know, when shelter in place, ends or when it doesn't like what what is kind of the plan moving forward what are the next steps so uh, i can talk about the most recent history was that you know in january and february there were some pretty major actions that took place in january we um had a very large demonstration at uh the 
uh, Inland Empire headquarters of the developer of the facility, Hillwood. We showed up with, um, mm. must have been something like 200 people to their, um, you know, uh, reasonably sized offices that very quickly became very small offices, you know, for mm. all those people packed in there. And, you know, we, we ultimately made our voice heard. We said no e-skate without a community benefits agreement, you know. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, uh, you know, we handed a letter to the to the sort of highest person at the office at the time and told them to make sure that we, we can, um, we should meet up and talk, right? Mm-hmm. We've been demanding that for such a long time. And um, essentially, you know, it's gotten to the point where in February, um, Teamsters Local 1932, as well as the Air Club, as well as uh, the Center for Community Action and Environmental Justice, uh, ended up suing the airport as well as Hillwood for mm-hmm. we, what we believe is uh, improper uh, development process. Pretty much, where okay, they yeah. essentially sorry, there's like an airplane um, flying over my house right now. Actually, <laughs> okay, no worries. Let me know when it's good. It's good, yeah. So, um, you know, we're suing the airport and the developer because they didn't go through the environmental review process properly. Mm. So that lawsuit's in, in, in motion right now. And mm. we were also joined by the Attorney General of California, Xavier Becerra, who is also suing the same entities for the same reason. Oh, wow. So, you know, we've got people power. We've got people power. People are uh, obviously um, showed up and showed up uh, in mass to the Hillwood offices in January, you know, and it seems like there is at least some elements of the government that are willing to step in and make sure that justice is served. Right. So yeah. I would say that moving forward, you know, I think that we can expect the same. We can expect that people will still organize to the point where you will see demonstrations and you will see acts actions you know um so uh as far as when and where that's all to be determined by by community members and organizers who have been working on this for so long so uh you know people are passionate about the subject and i'm sure we'll see those pa- those passions manifest themselves in the streets uh soon i'd say awesome that's really awesome that you guys have um a pretty strong and pretty firm base as well as some government support i mean obviously you can't say the same about like local governments but sure that you have yep. a, really, a really big wig um willing to support Boom. let's see let's see let's see mm, what is something that maybe like us as like outsiders like or maybe like community members but like in riverside or like like something that we can do to support you know maybe like amplifying it on social media or like other other you know, well, I, I would just say that, listen, like the fact of the matter is that um, too many of our local municipalities are uh, competing in a dog eat dog, low road, a race to the low, or what is it called? A race to the bottom approach when it comes to development, right? Mm-hmm. So people or entities uh, are, are essentially trying to get more jobs for their community right Mm -hmm. and the fact of the matter is that um you know we have the power they don't and the fact of the matter is is that if we had a much more regional approach to our development strategies Mm -hmm. um we would be able to create good quality jobs out of this industry that for so long has ultimately gotten obscenely rich on the backs of the working people of this region. Mm-hmm. So, so I would just say that like, you know, if, if, if you're in Riverside, if you're in Paris, if you're in Ontario, you know, wherever you are in the Inland Empire, you should be pushing. I mean, you, first of all, you should be getting with your friends and organizing to make sure that, you know, the, the development that does come in is, is something that can guarantee good jobs and clean air. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we should be pushing our elected officials to, to um, not take the low road approach so that, you know, so that there is standards across the region. And, you know, 
that is a hard thing to make to ask folks to do, you know, because mm. uh, it doesn't exist. But we need to start thinking about it this way. You know, it's a dog, it's a dog, dog eat dog world out there, and elected officials are trying to win election and trying to get the jobs to brag about it, right? Mm-hmm. But ultimately, you know, the region is, is only as powerful as 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 our you know as our uh, as our bonds. So we really need to make sure that working people can build solidarity and see that, like, you know. Hey, two hundred or hey, a thousand warehouse jobs in Fontana may be great, but when there's like a corporation that's dangling these jobs to Fontana mm-hmm. and then dangling them to Rialto, you know, and saying like, oh well, listen, if you if you don't want me to, if you don't uh, give me a subsidy or whatever, then I'm just gonna go to Rialto or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. We have to take a stand. We have to take a stand, and ultimately, like. These, 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 the industry has taken advantage of this region for so long. So we really just need to start getting in the mindset that we're only as powerful as our bonds are. So, you know, across the region, let's try and build something regional. Mm-hmm. And then in your own town, just organize to make sure these individual developments are, are actually improving people's lives. 